Hello and welcome to the second session creation tutorial video. In this video I will be focusing on AI and pathfinding. Now to explain it a bit closer. In the previous video I've said that I would like to have an AI freight train come in from this direction and enter the industry at the station. And let's say we also want him to unload his cargo. Now, what I'm gonna be doing. First things first, obviously, I want to place down the train. Second thing, I need to configure its path. And third thing, I need to program it to go to its destination. Now, every single person who has played around with the AI trains before knows that uh, they can be quite stupid. On their own that is that's why I'm not going to be explaining or showing how to program them basically I'm going to show you how to program them a bit more complexly so that they actually do what you want them to do it will still be easy and simple to program and will not require that much uh, attention but Basically, what I'll be doing is making the AI trains a bit more manual controlled. In other words, the AI will not be finding its own path. You, the session creator, will give that train a path that you want it to take. Now, there are several ways you can do this. The first way, the basic way, I'm not gonna be doing that. There's... I already said that. The AI is stupid. It will just get stuck, lost somewhere on the route, or and do something completely else than what you've asked it to do. I'm not gonna be looking on that. The second way is using a little bit of a small help. So now, when you're editing your session, you're obviously in the session layer. It says the layer step, down on the bottom you can see the session layer. You have it highlighted, you're in it. Now go into the track step or press F4. And to go into the track side mode, press Y. Now in here, find AI routing direction marker. Now place it on the tracks. Now you might you might think that oh hey it's the same as the uh, where is it? the track direction marker right well you're half right and half wrong because track direction marker works for every single train player trains included now you may be thinking how signals the track direction marker controls the signals if a path is selected against a uh, track direction marker, the signal will remain red despite it being empty path behind it. Now I'm gonna just show it a little. Hopefully it will work as intended. So let's just do a quick test of if it's actually do not show properly. Yes, it does. So we have a train here heading in that particular direction. You can see the junctions are currently switched against the track direction marker. AI or player train will not get through because the signal stays red. But switching the path to the uh, AI direction marker does not control the signals. Therefore, your train will get a clear signal to enter the station. Now this is important. Because the AI routing direction marker, as it says in the name, routes only the AI. What this means is that your player trains can go through them without any problems. The signals won't be affected. You have clear line, go right ahead through them. Direction markers, they will tell you to stop. So, that's one way of doing this. Basically setting the AI routing direction markers against the AI. So 
if I have a chain here and I want to go into the industry there, I'm going to place an AI direct routing marker here and AI routing marker there. This forces the train to avoid going the wrong way. Now, how do you know it's which way the Irish mark is facing? Well, it's basically in this shape of... Uh, I don't know the English name, unfortunately, for it, but from the profile, it's basically a triangle from all sides. And obviously, the point is where the front is. That means anything traveling in this direction, out of the station, can go through, but anything traveling into the station cannot go through. At least for the AI trains. So that's the second way of doing this. Setting in two direction markers and then you can put in a, the basic programming for the AI. Tell them to navigate to the industry and unload. Now the third way you can do this is without these ones. And it will require a rule to be added into the edit session window, into the rule window. That rule is the junction control. And the programming of the train is done in a bit of a different way. You don't tell it to navigate to the industry directly up ahead like on the very beginning. No, you firstly tell it to drive to a truck mark. Now, I personally prefer this method because when you're designing a session and you're working on a station layout like this, for example, or at a bigger station where you have more tracks and more possibilities for AI trains running around the player, um, you might come up with an idea, huh? I want to insert another train here, but I've already done the second way and I cannot do that because the AI direction markers will now block the path of this another train that I just decided to put in. So it's better to go with this third option of the junction rules and a bit of a different setup for the AI trains. This way you can pretty much fit into the station as many trains as you want in any order, in any direction. And it's still quite simple to set up. So let me show you then how this third way is gonna be done. Now first things first, obviously we need a freight train, as I've said. So let's just plop it, I don't know, somewhere here on this turn. Let's give it some cars. Um, example, bit of this, little bit of that. Um, one more like that. Let's say four car train so far. It's gonna be good enough for us. Actually, let's mix it up. Gonna couple the middle put in two more different hoppers. Now, these are grain hoppers, but we're not here talking about the differences of European trains and their ride and how they look. Right, so from previous video, name your train so you know what is where. So let's name this one. Was this station Ihlanovo? Was this train grain train, freight? So let's do Grain freight, and that's pretty much it. That's gonna be the only train that's gonna go into the station for me, so I don't need to add any numbers or anything on it. But just for showcase, I'm gonna name it one because why not? So, Ilanovo grain train freight one. So, we want him to go into the industry, as I mentioned. So go into the tracks tab and go into the check mark mode B and find the track marker. It's a red triangular shaped track object and place it somewhere around here, at least for me. And I'm gonna name it Ihlanovo, so station name, 
grain trade stop now what does this stop refer to is that i'm not gonna tell the train to stop at the track mark what i'm gonna tell it is to stop its command at that track mark and then i'm gonna tell it to go into the industry and unload now obviously first things first before we actually do anything of that we have to load this train up so how do you do that in your trains tab there's this little question mark on the bottom right it says edit properties or you can also press p to enable it and then just left click left click on the train car you see there's the loads barley flour but i don't have any of those loads in this industry so what am i gonna do i'm gonna have to add that load manually into each of these train cars so let's just say i'm gonna add it at next to barley so you see this little plus down there actually i'm gonna focus it in the middle of the screen you see the little plus next to the barley load the little small icon there you click that and a products window will pop up now in here i'm gonna put in the name of uh, the product that i want the train car to transport in my case is grain xvg add that and it's in there now you have to load it so what's the maximum load 50,500 now you can load less let's say 20,000 you can see that it's not fully loaded you can load you can try to load more so let's say 60,000 or 600,000 and it will stop at the maximum so now it's maximally loaded now over here you can see above the loads this little small car with an arrow pointing at another car now this means copy to other compatible vehicles so the load that you've just given to this train car will be copied to each train car of the same type in your consist now what do i mean by the same type these train cars that i over here are the same type but they're not the same asset what that button does is it copies the load to the same assets located in the car in the train so in my case it's gonna load the last car of the train just like that now let's do that for the other train cars as well now notice if there's only one car of the asset in there in the train there is you will not get the option to copy the load over so once again grain xvg select that confirm add load and again grain xvg select confirm load yada 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 now if a train car already has it assigned you can just load it directly up simple as that now you have your freight train ready so now we can get down to the programming of the parts and then the ai itself now this is just a very basic way of doing this and take this more as an explanation because using this method and just stacking up these simple commands and rules on top of each other you can create something very nice and complex and i'm going to show you that in the late in later videos as well so now in the bottom uh, sorry not bottom top left you see this little paper icon with uh, pen across it it's called edit menu you click that and there's edit session you can also press ctrl r to open it i've i've said that in the previous video as well gonna say it now as well right 
these are our basic rules we've been here before you know what is what now we need to add something more to it so that we can actually configure and program the stuff so on the bottom left you see this little add hovering your mouse over says add rule okay click that and you'll get a list of available rules to choose and select that you want to add in here to program your session now this is basically a ladder type configuration of programming you select pre-made assets and stuff pretty much you put them in order to make a working system so for our uh, little task over here to get from the from the track to the industry i'm gonna add a set junction it's this little rule down here it's quite small to see cannot do anything about it unfortunately but yeah the rule is called set junctions so you select that and you click the check mark to add it now that you have the rule in here you can press enter to edit it or you can click on the bottom left to edit the rule where you have it selected now set junction rule is quite simple to understand obviously it's in the name you use it to set junctions so let's add the junctions that i want to set so click the add junction of course if you want to add all junctions you can click add all you will need to reload the rule but that's all right so add junction click that and you get this little small pop-up window with junction names so how does this work let's look at this we have junction ihlp01 ihlp02 in our way of getting to the industry we don't need to worry about the O3 or O4 because they're not going to be on the path the freight train is going to be taking. So let's type in here into the little name. It's actually a search bar. I H L P. And let's find 01. So on the top, click it. You can see the camera moved to the junction that I have clicked. You can do this with other 02, 03, 04. 0506 this works with every single junction every single train car every single anything that you are able to add at least for this rule it's only junctions that are going to be showing here which means you can jump from junction to junction to be sure this is the one that i want so in my case i i want zero one add that and i'm going to add another junction ihlp and in my case, it's going to be the 0, 2. Right. So now you can see I have the two junctions in here. Now you can see they're added into a little bit of a table. There's junction, with its name, direction, locked state, and AI controls. Now, directions. Let's start with that. IHLP01 currently is set in the correct position, which means to the left. So I'm going to keep that on don't change. IHLP02 though is pointing the wrong way to the right and we want it to point left. So click the don't change and another window pops up. There you have, there you have the different directions the center don't change left and right now what does center do center you use when you have a three-way junction center one obviously takes the middle path through them don't change obviously doesn't change left and right again self-explanatory left changes the junctions to the left right changes it to the right if you have a double junction like i do you use left and right if you have a triple junction you can use the center as well in my case i want to go left so i'm going to select left and confirm it now you can see the state here 
it says it's locked. And if you click it, it can say unlocked. What does this refer to? This refers to the player in the game being able to control these junctions. If the junction is locked, the player while driving the session cannot switch that junction. If the junction is gonna be set to unlocked, the player will be able to switch the junction while driving the session. Now whether or not you want them locked or unlocked depends on what you are currently programming. Whether it's something shunting related or just passing through, for example. In my case, in if it both the freight and the player passenger train is gonna be passing through these junctions. So I'm gonna keep them in the locked state. Now the next thing you see there are AI controls. And below that you can see allows AI control and if you click it, it says blocks AI control. Now I personally recommend setting this to blocks AI control on every single junction that you add. However, once again, depends on what you're doing. If you are making something that you want the player to be locked out of control of, but you want the AI to still direct its own path, you use, you, you, you allow the AI control. But we all know that the AI pathfinding is kind of stupid. And the AI will get stuck and lost and whatnot. That's why I personally recommend blocking AI control. So I'm gonna keep that at blocked. Alright, that's our two junctions set and uh, confirm it on the bottom right. Now, now we have that. We can go and program the train, the freight train. So in the top here I have driver set up. I edit that and now I can pretty much see we have this player train from the previous video that's the one that the player is gonna be driving obviously now on the below that just below that you can see add another driver so clicking that you get a list of drivers now it doesn't matter which ones you add what matters is that they are named differently so you can have two drivers of the same type, just name them a bit differently. For example, adder, you're gonna have adder1, adder2, adder3, blah, 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 blah. Because those names are how the trains are assigned to the drivers and how the drivers are assigned to the trains. Now, why I'm saying this and why it's done like this is because previously, some people had trouble with, when using drivers of the same name that they will switch around their trains and therefore the configuration would have been done wrong because let's say that you have driver adder assigned to i don't know sd70 and you have another driver adder assigned to for example the Arcella express Now, previously, what could have happened is that the one assigned for Excel Express was assigned to the SD70 and vice versa. Sometimes, the driver from the Excel Express could kick the driver of the SD70 off, me meaning that the SD70 would be under control of the Excel driver. But the Axilla train itself would not be controlled by anyone. Now, I don't know if this has been fixed or not. It was rare previously, but it's still better safe than sorry. So I recommend naming them differently. I've explained this in the previous video as well. So I'm going to add the driver adder. I don't need to name him anything else. There's only one of them right now, so it's all okay. Now the red underlined there is vehicle. Clicking that, 
we can select a locomotive now consider the fact that we don't have any other train on the route right now other than the freight train available it's already selected confirm the selection and you have him assigned now the third um column there says auto detect click that and change it to ai driver that way the player will not be able to take control of that driver this same applies if you're making a multiplayer session your guests on the session cannot take over an ai driver however you as a host can which is quite handy in some situations so we have our driver assigned train assigned and type of driver selected now you see this little double down arrow over here on the black uh, rectangle here I'm gonna make it a bit longer so that we can see it better that black rectangle is where your commands for the driver are gonna be and those double down arrows clicking them opens the list of available commands that you can give to your driver so in my case as i've said before i want to make the ai train go to a track mark stop its commands and then continue to the industry and unload now from a previous video i've talked about the driver commands so refer to that one if you want to find more here click in the double down arrow i'm gonna select a command called autopilot command now you can see holding your mouse over it, it there's activate and there's stop a check mark and this hovering your mouse at stop a check mark shows the different check marks now if the, if you have a lot of check marks they're gonna be grouped by name so m to p p to p uh, v to z you know stuff like that alphabetically obviously unless is of course the track mark in the session layer which is quite handy but at the same time it can also be very fucking annoying because sometimes the track mark that you place in the session layer is gonna be listed on the top sometimes it's gonna be listed in the middle sometimes it's gonna be listed at the end but they will mostly be grouped together so in my case i'm happy that it's on the top so i'm gonna select the track mark that I've placed down in the session layer, Ihlanovo Grain Freight Stop. So clicking that adds the autopilot command to the line, to the queue of commands in the black rectangle. Now clicking it, you can see some other kind of uh, possible edits for some other commands. Now, our frame chain is gonna go to the track mark, but it doesn't know what to do after. I'm gonna say real quick though, autopilot command, the reason why we use it, at least why I use it. You can set the train to navigate to a track mark, but it will not switch its own junctions along the way, which means that you, the session creator, can control its path. That's why we've done the set junction rule before this. So that our freight train under this command can find its path into its destination because they cannot switch junctions with this command that's why i prefer it because it allows me to dictate the path of the ai train where i want and gives me the freedom of basically having the train do what i want it to do let's say that the player is stopped at the station and I want a nice freight train pass through the mainline tracks at full speed 
then this allows me to do that because let's say I was I would have used the uh, other uh, navigating commands the train would have probably taken a shortcut through the yard and just go slowly and possibly getting stuck in the yard because of some other AI trains now this way I can control its path I know where it's going so if something goes wrong I know exactly what where why and maybe if you're smart enough you'll also know how right so now next to add is the train to go to the to the station to the industry to unload now for that i'm gonna be using the navigate 2 so click that and you see it appeared but you need to set it up so industry over here okay little drop down window you can either click that and find your industry by scrolling through or if you actually have a little bit of sanity within you you can just type it in to what you want to find in my case i want think i need to find this industry that's in the station thankfully for my case the industry is named after the station as well which is named after the village we're in. In my case, the industry is called Ihlanske Silo, which means there is the grain silo of this town, pretty much. So you selected the industry, and another row has appeared suddenly out of nowhere. It says platform. You can click that, and grain unloading appears, because that's what I've got in here this kind of industry, grain unloading. So, now that that's in, you can just click somewhere else outside of the black window that you have here. Just like that. Now, what we have programmed so far is that the AI train will go to the check mark, stop that command, navigate to the industry, and that's it. What it has to do, it has to unload. So clicking this one more time, we select the command called unload. And boom, we are pretty much done with this freight train. It will go to the check mark, stop its command, go to the industry and unload. Now, let's see it in Prax. Let's see how it works, if it works. So confirm that and confirm this. Now, never, and I cannot stress it enough, never fucking ever go testing your sessions through the quick drive never no control f2 no don't you never test in quick drive and there's a very good reason for it actually two reasons first thing is that the trains will break or can break the second reason that the session rules can break now let me explain. How can the trains break? Some scripts in trains will not work in quick drive. Meaning that the train will pretty much be useless. It will not allow you to be driven. It will not allow to be driven by anything. For example, some functions of it could not work as intended. You know, stuff like that. It's a very weird thing but it's something that most of us just live with at this point and we just never use quick drive to actually test the session the second reason of the session rules breaking now this is quite self-explanatory because well just just like the trains are scripted the session rules are scripts as well they may not load correctly when opened through quick drive so yeah just don't do quick drive for session testing instead in the top left go to the three line bars thingies over here it's called system menu open it up and click save over our existing session yes please now if you've done everything correctly if this is uh 
a route that has the build number of 3.7 or higher you will you should be prompted to only save the session if the build number is below 3.7 you will be prompted to save a copy of the route why this happens is because stuff below 3.7 is no longer supported so the game will basically want to force you to give it a higher build number so that it becomes supported so to say this creates problems of its own i'm not gonna go into that just know that this is what may happen and it's up to you of how you want to do it there's no need to be scared that oh hey there's a i have to create a copy what did i do wrong don't worry about that if the route, no, the route build number is below 3.7 <clears throat> If the route number is above 3.7 and you get the prompt to save a copy of the route, you did something, you quite possibly done something wrong. And that is that you may have accidentally touched something that is in the route layer. Now what do I mean by this? You may have deleted a building, moved an object, something. Something that's pretty much bound to the route was changed <clears throat> now you may be thinking oh my god i switched junctions in the session editor that's what i touched on the route no you didn't because changing junctions in the session editor does not save it to the route the junction direction is dependent of the default session for the route the first or more like the configuration session of the route or to say it in even more of an explanatory way the default session of a route is the session upon which everything is based every single session is a copy of the default session the time when creating a new session is exactly the same as the default session the junction directions are exactly the same as the default session when creating a session and stuff like that so changing the direction of junctions in your new session does not override the route does not the prompt to override the route it only overrides your new session it doesn't override the default session doesn't override the route just your session so you can switch them around all you want let me show you i'm gonna switch this one for example and this one for example just like that and now when i go save override existing session done so if you get a prompt to save a new route you fucked up somewhere else now that it's saved, exit the surveyor. This will throw you, of course, into the menu. And yeah, it's quite of a long, lengthy process if you have a bigger route and stuff like that, which is normal, honestly, and is like the best way because in the menu now you have your session here selected and you just click on the bottom right drive session. This is the way to test sessions so let's uh, just load in obviously bigger out bigger lo longer loading time so that's why i personally prefer to work so to say in bulk now let's pause it before anything happens i, I prefer to work in bulk what does this mean I want to do a certain section of the path first before testing it. So for example, let's say you have a double track main line between cities A, B, C, and you want to stop in the city B. You're going to firstly set up the city A of the player waiting at the station, other trains moving in and out. That's gonna be the first book or the first package. That you're gonna be working on the second book or a second package is gonna be the path between a and b now what 
Now this also incorporates, at least for me, the path into the station at B. So the entire length from A to B with B in trans included. Now very, when you configure A exit is up to you. It can be either from the very beginning or after some trains pass. It's up to you. But as the first A config, then it's A to B with B entrance. Then you configure B again, same as A. So player train stopped at the station, other trains run past, blah, 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 blah. And then again, B exit, and then you configure the B to C entrance. If that makes uh, at least somewhat of a sense. Work in smaller, well, not smaller, but like, if you have a long route, work in kind of bigger sections and then test them separately. Because every single time that you go testing, you have to go from the beginning of the session and get to the point you want to add. So every single time on repeat, start, test, and fix. Start and, you know, test, fix, and stuff like that. <sighs> All right. Getting a bit carried away here. So, let's see. We have our prey train over there. It has to go to the industry. Now, I'm going to press Ctrl H to show the junctions. Now, we can see that the junction rule is working properly. The junctions have been switched accordingly. Now, let's see. Does the AI train work? It's moving. Also, I probably don't have sounds enabled. Yeah, I don't have sounds enabled, so give me a moment. Alright, I'm gonna put the sounds of the train a bit lower. But, you pretty much... Yeah, see, it's working. Now, something though that's very helpful and very nice to have. In the top left... You can see the system menu again, go to settings, go to general settings, and on the bottom, there's this little thing that's very long. Enable debug features may disable achievement progress. Check mark that. Enable the debug features. Now I'm gonna disable the sound again, but I don't know why I even enable them, I guess just to see that yeah it works you get the sounds they are there just don't worry they're just disabled i guess uh, i should have come prepared more but let's test it out so now that you have the debug enabled what you can do is hold shift to make time progress faster let me show you Ta-da! Time is progressing faster. So, you can see that the train is working correctly with the programming, is unloading as intended. It has arrived to the track mark, got rid of that command, navigated to the industry, got rid of that command, and is now unloading. And after it's done unloading, It will get rid of the other command. Unfortunately, my train is one car too long, so he cannot unload any further. So I'm going to have to, in the editor, get rid of that one more car. Because, yeah, I want him to completely unload the entire length. Now, by the time that train unloads, what I'm going to be doing now is setting the path for the, AI, for the player train. And the player train is going to just leave the station. So, exit driver, don't save. This has been 45 minutes so far. And this is just me explaining. Though, yeah, I have to admit I'm talking around of stuff a lot. Okay. Q game. When the game throws a white screen at you after you exit a session, um, do control alt delete and get a program manager. The game will get scared and it will start 
working properly again. <laughs> so yeah. Going back into the session editor, we now know our faults and we know what to do next. So, once it loads, if ever, how's your day is going? Mine's pretty nice and quiet. Recording this before lunch. Alright, we're in. Let's continue. So, we know our faults. The train is one car too long. Get rid of the one car. Boom, done. That served. Now, go back into the rule editing. So, once again, edit menu, edit session, or press Ctrl R. Now, in here, we want to add another rule that's called check track side. Select that, add it. It's here. Now, edit it. Now, in this rule, particularly, check track side. Pretty self-explanatory, it checks a trackside object. So, what trackside object? We have to select that first. Click here to select, okay? Let's see, IHLP2. I'm gonna be connecting this to the junction of IHLP2. What am I gonna do? What I'm gonna be doing is that when the freight train passes the junction, the junctions around the station will switch and allow the player train to leave. So, we have the junction selected. Run mode. Wait for train to leave. There's enter, stop and leave. Obviously, each one's self-explanatory. No need to go into that. Filter to trains containing any train car? No. Add a new train car. And add the freight locomotive now you might be thinking don't i need to add the entire train no you do not because it filters to trains containing a certain vehicle it doesn't filter to vehicles so if your train contains this vehicle in our case the locomotive at the front and we set it for the rule to activate after the train leaves the junction it will not activate when the locomotive leaves the premises of the junction it will activate once the entire train leaves the junction premises so we have that set up that's pretty much everything you need to do with this rule complete and stop waiting confirm now add another rule and it's gonna be again set junctions add that in now how are we gonna do this? Because, if you remember from my previous video, I think I've explained it there. Um, the session rules, when they're like this, there's, it's a ladder type configuration, so to say. So, how do you need, how do you make them go in sequence and not all at once? Because as they are right now, they will go all at once. So if I do the set junctions rule like this, it will be conflicting with the other set junctions as they will activate at the same time at the beginning of the session. So to, so if you know a bit of the letter type configuration of programming, you know that you get the rows and columns. Where are the columns? On the bottom right, you see these little arrows. Clicking them, when you have a selected rule, moves the rule around, up, down, left, right. And you can see this left and right ones. Do you see what it does? What it does, it creates a column. And how it's tied to the previous uh, rule in it. In my case, this set junctions rule is gonna be activated after check check side gets activated. The set junctions rules rule is child rule of the check track side. So now that we have that basically done to do after that rule, we're gonna open this up and add the junctions that we want to control. So IHLP01 will have to go to the right, block AI control, 
IHLP, I believe our 03 over here, yes. We'll have to go to the left, block AI control, done. So, we can close this up as well with this little arrow down here. That's what it does. It's like a basically a rollout window. If you have more rules, kind of more systematic, I'm going to get into that once we get more complex on how to make this configuration more systematic and how to uh, make it readable better. So, confirm this. All right. Save. And I cannot stress this enough. Remember to save. Exit surveyor. And we're going to go into the um, drive session again. As we're nearing the end of this tutorial at 50 minutes. Jesus Christ. This was supposed to be a 20 minute explanation. But yeah, at least you see how much there is to it. But you see how easy it is to do but how much there is to it. Because the possibilities are pretty much endless. Right, so our pilot train is over there. Our freight train is slowly getting. Let's fast forward the time. He will go that way. Let's actually show the junctions and you can see. Once he leaves IHLP02, junctions 03 and 01 will switch. Ta-da! Junctions have switched. Which means the player now gets clear path out of the station. So yeah, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have more questions or require some kind of feedback or just if you have feedback on me doing these tutorials if you want something next explained or if you have an idea for a tutorial let me know down in the comments i'll be happy to assist you thank you so much for watching and in the next uh tutorial we're gonna be doing a bit of passenger train schedules navigation points and we're basically gonna i'm basically gonna show you how it's done when you want your train to just drive through places like this. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial shortly, I hope.